everybody, how is it going? This is Babylon 5, this is season 5, this is episode number 14. This episode is called Meditations on the Abyss, which is one hell of a title, if I'm being honest. That is like, hello, what's going to happen here then? Because who's meditating? Sounds very Minbari. What's the abyss? We just don't know yet. Um, last episode was probably one of the most interesting ones I've seen, actually, for a while. I liked that we got this insight into Psycho. That was not something that I really expected us to see, to get a viewpoint from them and how they operate, how they go around dealing with things. Like, as much as Bester goes on about, you know, the Psycho being a family, when that guy died, they didn't seem that bothered that one of their own people, one of their Psycho employees, had died. They just quickly moved on. And I was like... He goes on about this kind of unity, how they have to stick together. And yet there's like zero connection to this guy that died. And it's like, well, how much of that is just a, a front, really? Like, because it's constantly drilled into them, the cause mother, the cause father. And then we saw the posters around the psycho facility. So that was like something that I loved seeing, actually. And it's always brilliant when you get Bester in an episode, but to get an episode where he's in it so much, I think was just like a brilliant way to do it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of this episode earlier in the season with the two maintenance guys. And I like that we get in these shifting viewpoints as well, because obviously we follow the story of John and Delenn and Jakar. We don't get to see that up opposite side so much like it would have been so interesting if we got an episode during the the civil war of earth's viewpoint because we only kind of got snippets through isn but if we actually had like an episode where we saw like things clark was doing how much would our view our viewpoints have changed so it's like really cool to see something like that i'm really looking forward to this one so i'm going to get on into this let's go I just remembered I, I, I need some important papers for my quarters. At this hour? What's she doing? I wouldn't be able to sleep anyway, so I just want to make sure I know where they are. Are you sure? Yes. That's a yes, cool clock. I'll be right back. Does he believe her? What is she doing? I don't think I've seen you around here before. A guy? I'll buy you a drink. Wedding ring. No, thank you. I will ask you politely to go away. I will only ask once. Whether you like it or not, I'm the face you're going to be waking up to in the morning. You got that? Yeah. You broke my finger! True. Why have we never seen this side of Dylan before? Get back here! She looks happy with herself. I to wonder if you were going to make it by now. I said that I would never leave you. I would be here when you needed me most. And Tell me what you want done, I will make it happen, no matter the cost. I don't understand why you needed to see me alone down here. I could have met you in your quarters or council chambers. Or... Someone would have seen you and John asked about you. would have seen? You need to be discreet. Where are they? Does Sheridan know? He's probably the most important reason I'm keeping this meeting just between us. What is it you want from me? Oh, God. I help. I need you on patrol along the Centauri border, watching for anything suspicious. You know how they think, how they fight. Yeah, he's been around them long the enough. Anyone we need, it's you. Oh my God. But why not tell Sheridan? Since the death of Marcus, even the danger involved, I think John would be reluctant to send someone close to me on a mission like this. Oh. As a friend, he would want to protect you. As my husband, he would need to protect me from anything that might happen to you. Yeah. I think in that respect, he does not know you as well as he should. He knows me, but he also loves me. And sometimes the one gets in the way of the other. Oh. Yes, I. He knows. Imagine it could do that. Oh, God, it just feels awkward between them now. These are your instructions. You will be stationed aboard White Star 27 as one of the crew. The ship is already here, waiting for you. I haven't told the captain your mission. He knows only that you and the rest are to be trained in space combat in areas near the Centauri border. Oh. Is this for you? Fear? Help, please. <laughs> please. The finger, the finger. Maker, what is all this? I do sometimes Why, wonder, like, how much of this was ad-libbed because it's just brilliant. 
There was nothing fresh. Oh, so he went shopping. I supplies for a while. Oh God, what is this? Are they being spied on? I love that he just has buy this? a detector in the Drazi merchants of the Zocalo. You're oh, right, God. Lando. I Are was wrong. It was a, a very silly mistake of me. Oops. There. Ah. Should stew all day over that. God. Why would they eavesdrop on us? I mean, Shipping we're all lines. in the alliance together. I mean, what is wrong with them? It's the politics, dear. Never take it personally. Where was I? Oh, yes. His appointment? Of course, your position. As you know, Vier, I am to be Empress Su. As part of that change, I must name a replacement. Yes, Vier, I have decided that when I am gone, the new ambassador to Babylon 5 will be you. Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Mr. President, last night, our main shipping lines were attacked again by unknown forces. At least, Hence, unknown to us. Shit. Hence the thing on the back. We have reason to believe that you know who is behind these attacks. We are still in the process of conducting our investigation. Now, we have had several positive leads. But I do wonder if these leads pointed to someone close to you. I wonder what happened to that, Drazi, that was found out about in the infilling. the advisory board for the Alliance. A major race you. whose strength you need to keep this Alliance together. Uh, let's say the Centauri. Oh, shit. I wonder if you would be in a hurry to expose them. Ah, good. I was hoping to run into you here. Uh, Lando, this is a private... The Centauri Republic is a member of the Advisory Council. Shit, it is. Is there is. some reason why we have been excluded from this meeting? Someone must be terribly inept, whoever it was, planted a listening device in my quarters this morning. Yeah. The very idea is laughable, absurd, even moronic, wouldn't you say, Ambassador? Oh, God. I just wanted to alert the rest of you in case anyone tries anything equally as stupid as this again. Get your evidence. And remember your promise, President. God, this is good. It's so we will keep you to it. How's that? Perfect. I don't know how to thank you. Well, I do. I understand that you're giving weekly talks to your people based on what's in the book of Jakar. Oh. I talk, they ask questions. I don't think anything gets resolved. Well, I'd, I'd like to come and sit in on it, if you don't mind. As you wish. Can we all go? You have given me back my sight. What is truth? And what is God? <sighs> truth is a river. Oh, yes. And what is God? God is the mouth of the river. You planted this in a bag of fruit you sold me, and you tried to spy on my government. I don't know what you're talking about now. You go away. No, not until you admit to what you have done, and you tell me why. I thought Mondo stood on that what? We all know you, Veer Koto. You are weak. You are foolish. And now you will go away, or I will swat you. Because oh. <laughs> I'm the one person that you would never do that to. Something I can do for you, Veer? No, I just need to borrow this for a minute. I'll be right back. Little job. conversation spoo for brains? Grave misunderstanding. It, it, it was a terrible mistake. <laughs> what happened to Veer? <laughs> I promoted him. Now, now he is ready to be the ambassador for the Centauri. Well, did you arrest him? The Drazi didn't want to press charges because that would be admitting that Veer was mad at him because he bugged Londo's quarters. I almost wish. Drazi had succeeded in bugging his place. Where's Michael? I mean, is it that chair for Michael? Do. It wouldn't be right. But we could have found out what they're up to, why they're hitting the other worlds. I like how they've got the lights on, but they've also got candles. <laughs> I still don't think Londo knows about the attacks on the lion ships. That's my He's thought process. If somebody back home can pull this off without him knowing about it, being prime minister, then uh -huh. it has to come from the very top of the Centauri Royal Palace. So where is Garibaldi? I haven't seen him all day. I thought he was going to come. I sent him a note. Perhaps he didn't get it. Show me the way to go home. Oh, shit. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little... Yeah, that was a big drink. <laughs> About a 
an hour ago and it went right to my head. This was interesting because I've been saying for a little while how it's it's odd that we don't see as much Linnea and Via as we used to. So to get an episode where they were kind of prominent in it was lovely. That opening where Delenn was like, I need to go to my quarters, but then ended up going to the bar Marcus used to frequent down below and this guy like approach her the way Delenn like was with him like we've never seen kind of Delenn do that before where we've seen her physically harm somebody and I'm just like where's this Delenn been hiding like we saw where she's got angry and obviously wars have then started and we've seen her mad but we've never really seen her like that before and then the person to come and kind of stop this guy trying to get back at her was Linnea and they had this whole kind of secretive meeting about finding out information on what's going on with Zentari, Linnea going undercover on a white star. I was like, holy hell, I need more of this Delenn, please. A lot more of this Delenn because that is amazing. Not quite sure how John's going to react to this with Delenn keeping it from him but then on the other hand I'm like well he's kept shit from her in the past so kind of suck it up dude so like it's going to be really interesting to see what Linnea finds out because he's now off doing these training missions with the captain of this White Star number 26 I think it was on the other hand we've then got Via, who is going to become the ambassador to Babylon 5 once Londo has officially became emperor. And it was nice to see his smile because obviously we've got that kind of premonition, the prophecy still to come, I guess, of one of you will become emperor once the other has died kind of thing. So I'm guessing this is kind of Via's journey to that happening. He becomes ambassador first I guess so like to see how happy he was was really cool that scene of him in the Zorclo where he <laughs> basically like used sword to destroy the Drazi's stall was brilliant because obviously the Drazi have planted a listening device because the Drazi are onto the Centauri and I agree with Stephen when Stephen was saying at the meal toward the end like clearly Londo isn't fully aware of what is actually going on and it's above him that it's coming from. We know where it's coming from because we've seen who was at the Royal Palace. So to know Stephen kind of is on that same wavelength is really cool. The whole thing with Michael and his drinking, it seems to be getting a lot worse. Like those guys having this really lovely meal and then in contrast, you see Michael in his quarters, just three sheets to the wind, ordering pizza and they're all just kind of like, well, where's Michael? We invited him. We left him a message. Maybe he didn't get it. And it's just because he's just out of his mind on the alcohol, basically. I'm interested to see what happens going forward with this because Londo walking into that meeting with the Drazi ambassador saying, why wasn't I invited to this meeting? And that's been referenced prior, like when they found the button and they were like, from now on, we're going to have to have meetings without him. That's probably going to become more difficult the further on into this we get because, as he said, he is one of the people on the board of the Alliance. So how are they going to be able to navigate these meetings without him? That's going to be interesting because that scene with Jakar getting his new eye and Stephen being like I want to come and listen to one of your your talks and then seeing that talk I adored that I think it was my favorite scene in the whole episode when I was listening to Jakar talking to the other nan and Stephen watching on uh, with a smile on his face there was something about that scene where it actually just like really hit me that I don't actually have that much time left with these guys. And I don't know, it just kind of, it kind of got me quite badly. And I don't, it's just, yeah, I don't really know how to feel about that. So that was a bit of a gut punch, actually. And like seeing Stephen smile at Jakar and then walk away, I'm, I was just like, shit, like... This, this ends soon, right? So, yeah, um, I may go watch the next one and I will see you guys later. So thank you.